Good evening, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. Seven more Nepali nationals recruited in the Russian army dead. The dead toll of Nepalese in the Russia-Ukraine war reaches 21. Efforts to repatriate the Nepali nationals unsuccessful. Probe Commission investigating gold smuggling gives immunity to former Vice President Poon's sons. The committee given power to arrest suspects limited to formality. Russian presidential election to start from tomorrow. Candidates in the four candidates in the fray, Vladimir Putin competing for his fifth term as president. And a new road team defeats Kakadvitta Football Training Center Jhapa 5-4 in a penalty shootout to storm into the finals of the Buddha Subba Gold Cup. Nepali nationals who had been recruited in the Russian army have died. Issuing a notice, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that seven Nepali youths who had joined the Russian army illegally had died in the Russia-Ukraine war. According to the ministry, the deceased have been identified as Poina Bahadur Gurung of Thading, Nobin Shahi of Jadarkot and Padam Bahadur Ghimire of Udaipur. Likewise, Gangaram Adhikari of Chapa, Jit Bahadur Bika of Baglung, Sanjay Kesi of Bake and Sundar Muktan of Raswa have been killed in the Russia-Ukraine war. With this, the number of deaths of Nepali nationals in the Russian army has reached 21. Prior to this, Minister for Foreign Affairs Narayan Kaji Shrestha, during a telephone conversation, had urged his Russian counterpart to repatriate all Nepali nationals who have been recruited in the Russian army. Minister Shrestha had also urged the Russian ambassador to Nepal to take required initiatives for the safety of Nepali nationals in the Russian army. The government does not have proper data regarding the number of Nepali nationals that are currently serving in the Russian army. The bodies of those who had died while fighting for Russia have not been returned home. The government had imposed prohibition in visiting Russia for those other than students and for occupational reasons. However, the illegal recruitment of Nepali nationals in the Russian army through middlemen has continued unabated. Likewise, bilateral efforts for the rescue of Nepali nationals on part of the government has failed despite repeated requests with the Russian authorities. The probe commission formed by the government to investigate illegal gold smuggling in Nepal has submitted its report. The commission formed under the leadership of former High Court Judge Dili Raj Acharya on 2nd of October last year submitted a 485-page long report to Home Minister Rabi Lamichani. The Central Investigation Bureau CIB of Nepal Police had filed a case alleging 50 individuals for their involvement in gold smuggling. The probe commission has collected statements from the alleged individuals as well as 21 others who have not been listed as defendants. The connection between former Vice President Nanda Bahadur Pun's son Dipesh and Belgium national of Chinese origin Dawa Chiring has been revealed. He had not been detained earlier due to pressure from CPN Mao Center leader. Likewise, the Commission had collected statement from Mao Center Vice Chairperson Krishna Bahadur Mahara, who is alleged of involvement in smuggling 9 kilograms of gold through electric cigarettes. However, action has not been taken against him. The CIB had arrested 30 individuals, including six Chinese nationals and three foreign nationals of Chinese origin, for smuggling 60 kilograms of gold. However, the authority has not been able to collect their statements. On-site research has been conducted at seven transits, including the 3-1 International Airport. The then opposition CPNUML and Rashtriya Sotantra Party had exerted pressure for the formation of a high-level probe commission to investigate the matter. Both the parties are currently in the government. The probe commission has resorted to formality as political leaders and those with political reach have been dragged into the case. Meanwhile, Kantipur Television had made public a video in which former Vice President Nanda Bahadur Poon's Secretariat member and his son Jitendra were seen dealing with a Chinese gold smuggler. The main opposition, Nepali Congress, has blamed Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal for appointing a controversial person as minister and has demanded answer from the Premier. 
During the meeting of the House of Representatives, Nepali Congress lawmaker Badri Pandey, hinting towards Home Minister Rabilami Chane, said that the Premier had made a mockery of the country's judicial system by allocating a ministry to a controversial individual. He warned of parliament obstruction if the Premier fails to furnish answers. CPNUML lawmaker Thakur Gaire urged the government to take actions against those involved in the gold smuggling case, cooperatives fraud and the Ansel tax evasion case. He also urged the government to clear the dues of dairy farmers. CPN Mao Center lawmaker Aman Lal Modi said that the agendas that were previously tabled at the parliament must remain intact, even though the political equation has changed and urged the government to conclude the transitional justice bill at the earliest. During the zero and special hour, lawmakers drew the government's attention towards rescue of Nepali nationals from the Russian army and justice for victims of microfinances. In the meantime, Minister for Federal Affairs and General Administration Bhanu Bhakta Joshi presented the Federal Civil Service Bill 2080 during the meeting. Time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Before that, let's take a look at the result from yesterday's poll. Yesterday, we had asked why has information technology related teaching started by the government in community schools not been effective. 55% voted for A, height of negligence, 7% for B, feeble plans, and 38% for C, lack of manpower. Here's today's question. What's your say on the rush to form an alternative political equation right after the formation of a new one? Your options are A, anxiety after losing power, B, result of mistrust, and C, never improving habit. Voting is on, type in EWS, select your option, A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. We'll take a short break here, we have more news coming up. A scuffle has been reported between the victims of cooperatives and police in Kathmandu. Victims of cooperatives from across the country had staged protests in the capital earlier today. The victims had demonstrated in the capital's Gongobu new bus park, Sankhamul and Jalakil, among other places, and had culminated into an assembly in Trikuti Manda. The clash between police and protesters occurred when the latter was headed towards the Department of Cooperatives in Banishwar. The victims have demanded action against the operators of cooperatives and to return their deposits. Around 500 victims have not been returned their savings by the cooperatives. It has been revealed that the operators of cooperatives have misused deposits by investing in real estate against the principles of cooperatives. Operators of various cooperatives have absconded after they could not return the deposits. The agitated depositors, meanwhile, have been demanding justice for a long time now. In our Public Voice segment, today we have asked in several provinces regarding their access to safe drinking water. Let's take a look at what they had to say. I am आउँछ <laughs>
Time now for international update. Voting in the Russian presidential election will start tomorrow with several new rules being launched for this year's polling. The Federation Council of Russia has scheduled the presidential election from 17th of March. The Russian Central Election Commission has decided to extend the voting period to three days from March 15 to 17, making it the first three-day presidential election in Russia. For the first time since 2008, four candidates are vying for the presidency. The CEC has to date registered four candidates that will run for president in the upcoming elections, namely incumbent Russian President Vladimir Putin, leader of the Liberal Democratic Party, Leonid Slutsky, Vladislav Davankov, nominated by the country's New People Party, and Nikolai Karik. Haritonov, nominated by the Russian Communist Party. It is also the first time that nearly 5 million Russian civilians will vote in an electronic voting system. The most unusual vote will take place in space, where members of the Russian scientific expedition team aboard the International Space Station will vote through trustees. Time now for another short break. We'll be right back. Time now for sports update. Sports news. New Road Team NRT defeated Kakadbitta Football Training Centre Chapa 5-4 in a penalty shootout to storm into the finals of the Burasubba Gold Cup. In the semi-final played at the Dashrath Stadium, Fore Fofana opened the scoring for Kakadbitta in the 44th minute. However, the lead did not last too long as Saroj Tamang scored for NRT in the first half injury time to level the match at 1-0. In the second half, both the teams failed to capitalize on the opportunities to score and the match was held to a 1-0 draw after regulation time. The match had to be decided through a penalty shootout in which NRT's substitute goalkeeper Pramanjay Gakshadar became the hero. He had entered the field towards the end of the match in place of Pujan Hona. Pramanjay saved the spot kick of Kakadbitta's Bishal Khalan to help NRT secure the 5-4 penalty shootout win and book a spot in the Budasubba Gold Cup finals. All the five NRT players, Saroj Tamang, Jay Gurung, Sishir Lekhi, Mohit Gurung and Sonam Limbu converted their spot kicks. Meanwhile, Kakadbitta's Divas Urav, Bimal Kharti Mogar, Abhishek Gurung and Devendra Tamang converted their penalty kicks while Bishal Khalan missed his. NRT will now clash against Anfa Morang in the title decider on Saturday. The Nepal Police Club and Armed Police Force crashed out of the Koshi Province Trophy National T20 Cricket Tournament from the group stage after losing their matches today. This has helped Karnali Province and Surupashim Province to secure their places in the semi-finals. In the last group match played at the Bajnath Poor ground in Viratnagar today, Bagmati province brushed aside Nepal Police Club by 33 runs. Bagmati batted first after losing the toss and posted a challenging total of 173 runs for the loss of seven wickets in the stipulated 20 overs. Ishan Pandey top scored for Bagmati with a quick fire 74 of 50 balls and remained not out. Ishan scored included two sixes and seven fours. Robin Joshi also contributed 27 runs of 23 balls. Shubh Kangsakar added 26 of 20 balls and skipper Rith Gautam chipped in 24 runs of 17 balls. Abhishek Karki and Deepak Serla were two with two wickets each were the leading wicket takers for the police team. Chasing a victory target of 174 runs, Nepal police were balled out in 12 overs after scoring 140 runs. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.